Quiet! I know we all have our different desires and ideologies, but we also have something in common. We all love war. So let's work on that together. Recently, Rimor released new updates that are completely compatible with the Empire mod. If you are already familiar with the Empire mod, I suggest you to swipe right on Rimor mod. The two modes go together like PB and J. Oh yes. One big improvement they made is the map combat. More dynamic, enemies can sense Scouting parties around and trade caravans can attack each other. Very good stuff. In this video, I will tell you more about how you can get the best out of these two well-matched mods. The Empire mod allows us to create our own faction with multiple settlements on the world map that support our colony both economically and militarily. Rim War, on the other hand, introduces global conquests where factions vie to become the dominant power across the world map. The factions can even interact with each other to form alliances and declare war. Let's spread our influence far and wide with our faction and build settlements that will bow to our will. We can collect taxes from our settlements and tend to events that plague the county. We can manage our own empire and reap the benefits. Or we can stay divided and fall. Sounds fun, huh? Without further ado, let us begin the show. There are no research or other requirements to start, so technically you can start creating your own colonies straight away. The only barrier to becoming a Rimworld superpower is silver. Your first settlement will cost you 1,000 silver, though I recommend having around 5,000 on hand to upgrade your settlement and build the appropriate building. And remember, the silver needs to be in a stockpile zone or it won't be considered available for use. In Rim War, player settlements will be recognized as vassal factions. First thing you have to do when creating your factions is the faction policies and traits. From here, you can set how you would like to get your settlement taxes collected and create your tax delivery map, all in the action button. I hate taxes. Shut up. After you have done that, then start to create your factions. This will allow you to set the name, title, and icon of your new founded faction. Once you have done that, you'll see the Create New Faction button. Change to Create New Colony button. Clicking on it will bring you to the world map, where you'll now choose where you want to place your new settlement. When you choose the place for your new baby settlement, there are two things you should consider. Number one is the resources production number. Two is the distance and path from the new settlement to your current settlement. Let's talk about the resource production first. Your main consideration will be the type and amount of resources that the new settlement can produce. The nine types of resources that you can produce are food, weapons, apparel, animals, lodging, mining, research, power, and medicine. Yeah, medicine. And the production stats are influenced by both the biome and the elevation. I suggest you choose between a flat tropical rainforest or small hills of temperate swamp. Rimwar uses a unique resource to a point system assignment for every map object, and every faction has a power rating based on the cumulative power of all map objects in their factions. The events are driven by the combat power associated with the map objects. Yeah? Alright? You understand? Good. Rimwar also added some new global map objects such as Warband Scout trade caravans and settlers. Now, before we move on to the second consideration, I'd like to remind you all to subscribe if you haven't already. Making these videos takes a lot of work and it makes us happy to know that you want to see more. So go and show us this is a good video and hit that subscribe button. Also hit the like button and comment down below. Do all the interaction-y thingies that makes the YouTube algorithm happy that brings more people here. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Good work. Good on you, mate. Okay, the second thing to consider is the distance and the path between your settlement. Both the distance between the two settlements and the terrains that connect them determine the travel time. The travel time affects the duration it takes for your settlement to be built and how long the taxes will take to arrive at your base. Be mindful that the research and transport pods will need maximum travel time of 0.5 days no matter the distance or terrain. Make sure you don't go too far or too high on the hill or you will make your colonists un happy. Now, since you have built your own settlement and spent your precious resources on it, it's time to get some money back. In order for your settlement to turn a profit, it has to start producing first. To do that, you need to go back to the colony setting on your new settlement. This will bring up your colony specific interface. On the right side, you can assign individual workers to different resources. Keep in mind that every worker costs upkeep. That upkeep goes up. The more workers you have assigned, the total profit is going to tell you how much silver you'll get to or have to pay. 
pay during the next tax cycle. So what do you think is more important? Silver or resources? By default, all your settlements will give you silver regardless of what resources they are producing. If you want to change that, you can check the is teeth column for that resource. This means that the obtained resources will be given to you directly instead of being counted as profit and given to you as silver. Let's talk about upgrading your settlement. With each level, it will cost more silver, but in return, you'll get extra workers to assign to your resource. It will also give you a military level, which we will discuss a little later. After your settlements have been billed for their taxes, you'll be informed via a blue letter. Once that happens, you can go to your settlement tab again and click on bills. Here you can pay or get your taxes. If you have to pay silver because you have a teeth set up, click on the resolve build. This will take the silver right from your stockpile. At that point, the settlement will send the resources over and it works the same way for the silver too. You can check the events tab to see when the taxes will arrive. No one will win a war without power. So now let's talk about power. For power, you'll need to construct a faction power generator from the power section in the architects menu. This is where produced power will be sent to. The power will be given to you during the duration of the tax cycle in five days time. Caravans are associated with map objects, so you can always notice raids or caravans coming and even raids or caravans between AI factions. It is a dynamic diplomacy and occurs as a result of actions performed by objects. We discussed this earlier. On the map. Now this is where your diplomacy abilities comes handy in the game. You need to set up policies and traits in addition to the individual improvements. You make your settlements by upgrading the settlement or construction buildings, but you can also set up policies and traits that affect your faction as a whole. It is free to set these up and they give some nice bonuses, so there's no reason not to do it. In order to set these up, you have to head to your faction tab and click on the policies traits tab. From there, choose your policies and apply them. Keep in mind that it takes five days till they go into effect. You can check the remaining time in the events tab. How about setting up a military troop? The good news is each settlement has a military score. This score can be increased by upgrading the town, constructing certain buildings, or adopting certain policies. The score has three distinct effects or uses. Number one is defending your town. From time to time, your town will be attacked. You will be informed about this via a red letter. The text in the letter will tell you how strong the enemy force is. If your own military score is high enough, the defense it won't be a problem and nothing bad will happen. An unsuccessful defense, however, can result in losing buildings or even a town level at a, the particular settlement. Furthermore, it will result in lower happiness, loyalty, and production for a while. This is, of course, quite annoying when you have a settlement that's just starting out. You are, however, able to send your military from a different settlement to support the settlement that's being attacked. For that reason, it is recommended that you have at least one settlement with a high military score. In order to send your military to a different settlement, click on the attack settlement on the world map and choose defend settlement, where you can find an option to change location of the defending force. Number two is attacking settlements. Just like other factions can attack your settlements, you can attack theirs. If the attack is successful, you'll get some items as loot. Number three is supporting your troops. You are able to create custom squads, which you can call in via drop pods to support you in a dire situation. To start creating your armies, click on the military tab under the faction tab. This will open up a new window with three tabs at the top. You have to go from the right to the left here. Start by clicking on Create Units tab. Once there, click on the Select a Unit button. This will allow you to create a new soldier. From there, you can start customizing your new soldier. To equip your soldier, simply click on the label Equipment Slots. The game will show you a list with possible items you can have in that slot. Keep in mind that the availability of certain weapons or armor is dependent on research or tech level, for example. To give a soldier marine armor, you need to have researched it yourself. Before going to war, you better write a note or a letter to your loved ones. Ask for blessing or good luck. So let's have a break so you can start thinking of any comments or requests or questions in the comments section. Or if you are afraid, you can flag your white flag and surrender now. So please, give any comments. To create different soldiers, just click on the select a unit button again, which now shows the name of the unit you are making. You can edit your soldiers at any time. Once you have created all the soldiers you want, it's time to put them in formation. For that, go to the create squads tab. Again, click on select a squad to create a new one. Nice squad! From there, you'll see a 5x6 grid in which you can place your soldiers. In order for your armies to be supported by a village, they need to fit within the equipment cost. The equipment cost is determined by the 
military score of the village you want to assign your squad to. You can also set a village as a reference point for the equipment cost. For that, simply click on the set point reference button. Now that you have your armies, you have to assign them to a settlement. For that, go to the Designate Squads tab. Find the settlement that you want to assign your squad to and click on Set Squad. From there, you'll get a list of all available squads. Click on the one you want for that settlement. If the equipment cost is too high for the military score of the town, you won't be able to assign them. You can assign a squad to multiple settlements. When you want to use your army, simply click on the Deploy Squad button. Once you have done that, you can choose the landing spot for your soldiers. During combat, you can use the controls that pop up on the right of your screen to give your soldiers basic commands. Keep in mind that once you use as a squad it will go on cooldown before it can be used again which kind of sucks if you really really need them just speaking from experience here but if you have the same squad in a different settlement you can still call it in from there usually unless you don't know how to click like me the order fire support button next to the set squad button you can use this after you construct an artillery outpost building in that settlement once you've done that fire support will cost you 3,000 silver which to be honest if you really need it it's pretty cheap 3,000 ain't that bad when you need the artillery overall faction power is composed of settlements war bands scouting parties and settlers and the amount of faction power determines the size and strength of armies caravans and settlers the AI faction can generate Defeating an enemy army, gifting, or trading with other factions directly affects their faction power. Faction interaction matters, so you should form alliances, subjugate the weak, and destroy dangerous enemies across the world to create winning conditions. Factions will interact with each other to form alliances or declare war, take advantage of warring factions, and strike while they are weak, or declare an alliance with friendly factions to fight your wars for you. From here, I think you can have enough fun to win the war of factions. Yeah, what you got there? What They, they updated right as we were about to finish this video. Well, I mean, I suppose I can't complain about a good mod that actually updates. So in order to actually have this video come out at a good time and also save on effort to redo everything, let's quickly go through some of the changes that they just recently updated. <clears throat> now, we have the ability to send a caravan of colonists to help in defending settlements under attack. They also added proper base generation for settlements similar to that of a normal bases within the game. So defending or attacking them feels similar to the base game. Finally, they allow you to actually draft assigned defense squads within the base like colonists so finally you can coordinate defenses. Finally, no more brain dead pawns walking into obvious death traps. I mean, they are still brain dead, but they, hey, controllable brain dead pawns are better than just uncontrollable brain dead pawns. All right then, outside of some bug fixes, I think that's all of the new stuff. Good to know we caught on to that right before we finish this video. Enough all for now, I need some love. I hope this video will make you win and conquer the world of factions and you can sleep well all night. Not hesitate to drop some peaceful comments or questions. Hit the subscribe button down below. Be sure to click on another video. Thank you very much. Till next time.